If you have your Bible, turn to Matthew chapter 16 with me this morning, please. Levi the Publican, chapter 16. Verse number 13. This is the first message I ever preached was from here. Never forget it. Matthew chapter number 16. I told my pastor that morning God called me to preach. He said, then you preach tonight. I sweat blood. You wouldn't believe that afternoon. I'm serious. Man. Matthew chapter 16, verse 13. When Jesus came to the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they say, Some say thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, other Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon bar Jonah, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Father, I'm going to anoint this word, anoint the preacher this morning. I need your hand on my soul, Father, to stand for you, to speak for you. Heavenly Father, to be here, Lord, to do what you've called me to do. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated. Caesarea Philippi, verse number 13, differentiate it from Caesarea Maritima. Caesarea Philippi is in the northern part of the country. The waters come directly from Mount Hermon. They come out of the mountain at Benias. And they flow south. That becomes the headwaters of the Jordan River. That's what you have here. Matthew chapter number 16. And he says, who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? He'd been with them long enough now where they undoubtedly had formed an opinion. Who is this man? As far as the Pharisees were concerned, he did things that they couldn't explain, but they wanted to get rid of him. A lot of the people thought he was a prophet. His disciples couldn't understand a lot of things about his ministry and why he was here. Nicodemus was a ruler of the Jews. He came to him and said, We know thou art a man sent from God. No man can do the things thou doest except God be with him. But he said to them in verse number 15, Whom say ye that I am? You've been walking with me. You've been living with me. You have the Holy Spirit moving in your midst. So tell me, who am I? Simon Peter and said, Thou art Christos, Mashiach. Thou art the anointed of God, the Son of the living God. You can't say better than that. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon, son of Jonah. That's what bar means. And he's saying, You are a earthly son of Jonah. But what you got did not come from Jonah from your father or from anyone around you. He said, verse number 17, For flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. So it is with every one of you in this house this morning. If you can say the Lord Jesus Christ is the Christ, the Christos, the anointed of God, and he is the Son of the living God, you might have been taught that in Sunday school. You might have heard it preached a thousand times from the pulpit. But when the Holy Ghost makes it real in your soul, that came from God. And so he said in verse 18, I say, thou art Peter, and upon this rock I'll build my church. And he said, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Letting them know right off the bat that there would be a mortal enemy that would do anything it could possibly do to destroy his church. In verse 19, he said, I'm going to give you the keys of the kingdom. And this is power, this is authority, this is something that he has given his church that he hasn't given to anything, even the Old Testament. The church in the wilderness that he called them had not been given this kind of power. He said, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. 
The ecclesia, the called out assembly, his church, his body, his presence on this earth. The church is the pillar and ground of the truth. It is the place, my dear friend, where God manifests himself among people and he, he walks up and down in the midst of the church. And it's there that he blesses his people in a way they can't be blessed. And that's why you're here today. That's why you're here. There's a, there's a fellowship, a koinonia, that comes from being with God's people. Amen. Now, I'm not throwing off on people that can't make it. I understand that. That's why we're streaming. Thank God we can do that. But if you're able to be here in the flesh, it does make a difference. In John chapter number 20, he says to them, John chapter number 20. It's a remarkable thing here. The 20th, the, the 20, no, Luke 20. Luke 20. Not, no, it's John 20. I've got it right to begin with. <laughs> we'll get it right here. John chapter number 20. John 20 and verse number 19. The same day at evening being the first day of the week. What's the first day of the week? Sunday. Today's the first day of the week. Being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. He didn't, come, he didn't open the door and come in. He went through the door and came in. The door was shut. And he walked right through it. The body where he met on the seashore and he was, he was, as we sang a moment ago, he had fish on the fire and he said, come and dine. They could eat, but he was in his resurrected body. So he says to them in verse number, verse number 20, he said, and when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. And Jesus, and then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father hath sent me, even so send I you. That's apostello, apostles, sent ones, sent from God. Verse 22, And when he had said this, he breathed on them, and saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. He had given unto the church of the living God his spirit in power and authority. For in verse number 23, Whosoever sins you remit, they're remitted unto them. And whosoever sins you retain, they are retained. You can hunt high and low, read a thousand commentaries and get a thousand different views on what he meant by chapter number 20 of the book of John. Most of them will say well, that was for the time that that passed away. That is no more. Now, that may be so, but I'm going to tell you right now, there's nothing in the Scripture that says it's so. What the Scripture does teach is that the church of the living God is the source of the truth of this world. And that when you disseminate that truth, you are giving life to people. And you're opening the keys of the kingdom to people. And you're showing them the way to God. The government is not the source of the way to God. The educational establishment is not the source to the way of God. The, the business community is not, but the church of the living God is the pillar and ground of the truth. Amen. And my friend, I want to tell you right now this morning, I love his church. I love his body. I love to be in church. I love to be around God's people. I believe that this is a wonderful thing. I went for a long time in my life and had no need, didn't care for the church. Until I was 27 years old and then met God face to face. And from that moment on, I had a love for the church of the living God than I had before. And I had a love for His Word that I did not have before. And that Bible, it was so confusing and so anachoristic and so out of touch and so old, all of a sudden became alive and started talking to my soul. Amen. Something changed me profoundly. And it was not from outside influence. It was something burning within me. It was a wellspring. It was a well of life bubbling over and coming out. And that was the power of the Holy Spirit of God in me that had changed my life. My dear friend, Satan has a substitute for the truth and it's called religion. He's got a substitute for salvation. It's called religion. The Baptist religion, the Presbyterian, the Catholic, the Episcopalian, the Orthodox. It's all religion. And your religion comes between you and God. 
The Lord Jesus Christ is the way, the only way. There is no other way. And Peter said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. He didn't care who thought about it. Peter didn't ask the other disciples, well, what don't you think about this now? you agree with me on this? I mean, well, let's, take a, let's take a vote here. What do you all believe? No! Peter stood up, and as he is, he said, You're the Christ, the Son of God. Whether they believed it or whether they agreed with him was irrelevant to Peter. And let me say to you today, I say it as Peter said it, and I don't care what they think about it. It doesn't matter to me if it fits the faith community. Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God, and there is no other way. Amen. That's what I believe and know in my soul. Matthew chapter 16, he said, The gates of hell shall not prevail against... You know there's 70 million Christians in China? That we know about. There may be 300 million Christians in China. There may be twice as many Christians in China as there is in this country. The whole population. The last census of America is something like 330 million, give or take a few million. 70 million Christians in China. So they said, preacher, the church is dying. Oh, no. Maybe you are. <laughs> but the church will never die. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Oh, no, my dear friend. When he comes for his bride, his bride will be here waiting for him. He'll appear the second time without sin unto salvation for those that look for his appearing. Go home and pray over that and ask God what that means. He'll appear the second time without sin unto salvation for those that look for his appearing. The typology is the Old Testament high priest when he walked into the Holy of Holies. And this was on the seventh month, the tenth day of the month. It was the day of atonement, Yom Kippur. And he went in there and he stood for the people. And he represented all of Israel. And if God blessed him, he would turn around and walk out. And the people would be standing there holding their breath. What's going to happen? And he would raise his hands and he would bless Israel. Because he had been blessed, he was able to bless. But he only blessed those who were looking for his appearing to come out. Are you looking for his appearing? Or are you as... The the Lord Jesus says of that day of Noah and the day of Lot that they were going and buying and selling in marriage and giving in marriage and knew not until the day came and took them all away. They didn't know. They were looking for the Lord. They were religious and they were part of the faith community. But they were not looking for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. I am. I am. Every day he draws us closer. You don't believe it. You say, I've heard it all my life. That's what the Bible said you'd say. But he's coming. He's coming. He's coming. I can hear him come. I can feel him come. I know in my soul he's coming. There's no answer here. It's not getting any better. Fauci says the other day, you know who Fauci is? He says there's no end in sight. He said there's no end in sight. There's, there's no light at the end of the tunnel. We're in the tunnel, but there's no light down there. He says, I don't know what to expect. It's getting worse. And we are we're experiencing a double wave now, the second wave of this thing. And people are scared to death. And they're trying to scare you to death. And I begin to wonder if this is a lot of it's not for control. I'm not doubting one bit that this is a heinous thing, that it's a plague. It kills people. No question about that. But I begin to wonder the politics of it and what's, who's controlling what and, and, and the end game and what's going on. Here's what you've got to do. Stay in the book and stay on your knees and get right with God and stay with God. Amen! Plug into God! Amen. I want you to turn to the book of Luke chapter 24 verse 28. Luke 24 verse 28. And I love him with all my heart. Amen. Luke 24 and verse 28. Now to get the context, look at verse number 25. Luke 24, 25. Then he said to them, O fools and slow of heart, to believe all the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered, first coming, and to enter into his glory? In other words, come back glorified, second coming. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, in other words, their Tanakh, the Old Testament, the Torah, the Navin, the Ketuvim. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. Now watch this. This is amazing. And they drew near into the village, whither they went. 
And he made as though he would have gone further. You get this? He had just excoriated them for their unbelief in the scriptures. We have a tendency to pull out the positive scriptures, don't we? We have certain scriptures that we like. We memorize them. You know, we, we share them so forth and so on. That's all good. I love Jeremiah chapter number 9. I love that. I love these, some, some scriptures in the Bible that I, I really embrace. That speak directly to me. But you see, ought not Christ have suffered all the scripture and he would have gone on? Look carefully. He made as though he would have gone further. He had just given them a Bible lesson. He had just made two Bible scholars. Believe me, from this day forward, they never read the Scripture the same again. No, they didn't. A smart man one time said this. He said, you take that Old Testament Scripture, Genesis through Malachi. He says, you take that Old Testament Scripture. He said, every single verse in that Old Testament Scripture, you can find Christ. Amen. Try it. He said, he's, in, he's interwoven. He's sown in it. Search the Scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they that testify of me. In one fashion or another. He will relate to or be directly revealed in that scripture. So he would have walked by them. I like a lot of people, they've had a head full now. They've been taught. They've, they've been exposed to the Bible. They can get up and teach other people. You know, they, they can brag about how smart they are and they can hang medals on them and hear their scholars and all of that. And a lot of people are satisfied with that. That's good enough for them. That's their life. That's okay. Their ego gets pumped up every day. And they love it. But these two wanted more. He would have gone on. And they said to each other, hold on a minute. Now wait a minute. Wait just a minute. We can't just let him go out. We can't just let him walk on. And they said to him, but they constrained him, saying, abide with us, for it is toward evening and the day is far spent. They didn't just ask him. They said, now look, <clears throat> please don't walk off and leave us. You've done set a fire in our soul. Did not our hearts burn within us? Are you following me? You did something for me that nobody else could ever do. You've opened the Bible for me. Don't walk off and leave us. What I'm saying to you is simply this. We love the Bible we love what it teaches. We love His church. We love all these things. But Christ, you're greater than all of that. we got to have you. That's what they said. Look at Mark chapter number 7, verse 48. This is another one of those passages that's quite remarkable. Mark 7, 48. Well, I got the wrong scripture reference. Where he's walking on the sea. Anybody help me with that? Mark 7. Well, thank you, devil. Do what? 648. Thank you. It's good to have people around who can help you out. Mark 648. Now look at this thing. And he saw them toiling and rowing, for the wind was contrary to them. And about the fourth watch of the night, he cometh unto them, walking upon the sea. Isn't that beautiful? A lot of people have been happy with that. They go back and tell people, I saw the Lord walking on the sea. Let me tell you the miracle that I saw performed. Let me tell you about what a wonderful thing that I've seen God do. I've seen Him heal the sick. I've seen Him raise the dead. I've seen Him, I've seen him do all of these things. They didn't stop there. Look what it says. And He would have passed by them. <laughs> Did you get that? He's testing them. He would have walked on by. 
When's the last time you saw somebody walk on water? And he would have walked on by. And you could spend the rest of your life saying, I saw a man walk on water. I saw God heal somebody. That wasn't good enough for these people. They wanted more. They wanted the one walking on the water. That's what I'm trying to say to you this morning. A lot of folks get all kinds of fads. The fad comes through the church. Everybody gets caught up with the fad. Then the fad passes on. They get caught up with this movement or that movement or these people or this thing or that thing. But eventually it dries up and blows away. But the Lord Jesus Christ will never, ever, ever be where you don't want Him anymore. He will always satisfy the yearning of your soul. So He said in Matthew 16, 18, Upon this rock I build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. What a wonderful thing. They saw what He could do. He could raise the dead. He could heal the sick. He could walk on water. But then when He went to the cross, and they told Him He would go to the cross, but when He was hanging there upon that tree, I don't think they could handle it. John was the only apostle with the women who stood there and looked up at him hanging on the cross. It was a horrible end to a wonderful life. No man ever spake like this man, they said. Who is this man? And so, my friend, they watched him die on that cross. They watched a lot of them, their hope perish because their hope was him and they couldn't understand why he would die on a cross. Well, preacher, don't you know that that's redemption? Don't you know that? Listen, folks, the reason you know it is because the Apostle Paul spells it out for you in the New Testament. And he takes what Christ did on the cross and he puts God in Christ reconciling the world into himself. All they understood was that he had died. And they couldn't make a lot of sense of it. This is why they ran. They were afraid. They hid themselves for fear of the Jews. Book of John chapter 19 verse 38, they're persecuted. John 20 verse 19, he promises the Spirit to them. And so these, these original apostles, the twelve, they're tested. I don't like test. I don't necessarily like to be tested. But you're being tested. It's not for God to find out what's in you. It's for you to know what's in you. It's for you to know if you're a real believer or not. You're being tested. I'm telling you, you're being tested. I don't know tomorrow. I don't know how long this thing will last. I have no idea. But you're being tested. In other words, God's doing you a favor. Some of you a long time ago prayed for revival. He's about to give you one. Some of you a long time ago said, Lord, my heart's cold and indifferent and I'm backslidden. He's about to draw you to him. Some of you a long time ago, you said, Lord, the Bible is dead to me. I just don't have any desire to serve the Lord. I'm just empty inside. There's just nothing in me. He's about to do something to help you. Tribulation worketh patience. As our brother quoted just a few minutes ago, I stand at the door and knock. Have you noticed the church of Laodicea, the church of the rights of the people? There are seven churches of Asia Minor over there in the book of Revelation. And the church of Laodicea is the one that is lukewarm, neither hot nor cold. And the Lord Jesus Christ is outside asking to come in. But you learn something about His nature. He said, I knock, you will you open to me. He would have gone by. He would have passed on. It's your choice that you make. If you're happy with a little, just enough religion where you know you, you've got mama's hair in your Bible and you've got the family uh, who married who and who died when and all that. If you've you got a family Bible laying on the table and, and you're happy with all of that, then you don't care anything about what I'm talking about this morning. But if some of you have ever really walked with the Lord and there's a hunger inside your soul, He'll fill that hunger. Because in the midst of all of this, watch it. Watch how it develops. Watch it. Watch it. In the midst of what you're going through right now, you are being tested. And you'll find out how true your faith in Christ really is. And once you find that out, that's the greatest gift He could give you. You no longer have to fool yourself. You no longer have to make excuses 
When this is over, you'll look at yourself and you'll say, my, 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 my. I never imagined that. I went to Paris Island in 1964. 64. I was a 17-year-old basketball player. Played basketball at Rural High School. Enjoyed it. Had a time. Loved it. It's the only reason I stayed in school. I was an athlete. I was in excellent condition. I was six foot three and weighed 168 pounds. So I went to Paris Island. I've been playing. Big game. Life's a big game. You know, cheerleaders cheering, ball game. That's life's a big game. Till I got off of the bus at Paris Island and that sergeant knocked one man flat of his back right in front of me. Knocked him down. Don't ever let anybody tell you otherwise. They don't know what they're talking about. I've been there. I don't know what's going on now, but the boot camp I went to in 1964, he would walk up and knock you flat of your back. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, my youth, this 17-year-old kid, my ball playing, my, the cheerleaders, the shouts, the hoop, where am I? That's the first thing that came to my mind. What have I done? <laughs> I really did. I thought, I never knew a place like this was on the face of the earth. What am I doing here? <laughs> but you know what happened? I found out something about myself. Let me tell you something, and this will help you. You don't know how you're going to react in certain circumstances until you've been there. You think you know, but you don't know until you've been through it. I watch men get in bed with each other. The real instructor come through, and here's two guys in bed. What, what for? Get kicked out. They couldn't take boot camp. They couldn't take it. They wanted out. I saw that. I saw him walk up and hit, just knock the, the daylights out of somebody, and they start crying. You know what? That's not the thing to do. Two of them took hold of him and took him back to the head, and he came out of there. You could hear him yelling in there where they were beating on him. Why were they doing that? Trying to beat the tears out of him and beat some, beat some strength into him. He came up and he got my, my face, looked me right in the eye. He hit me, knocked me back into the bunk. You know what I did? I got right back up and I stood right back in his face and he said, get mad, big boy. And he hit me again. And I knew what he was trying to do. So I got right back up and got right back in his face. <clears throat> and he went to the next one. Now, I didn't know that that's the way I was going to react until I got there. And then I said to myself one day, I got 13 more weeks of this. I did. They handed me a toothbrush and said, scrub the floor. <laughs> Everything. And you wouldn't believe. You wouldn't believe. And I said to myself one day, now wait a minute. I've done this. I've made this choice. Here I am. What am I going to do? Am I going to cry or am I going to make it through? And that's when I made it through. Are you going to cry today? Are you going to whimper today? Are you going to make excuses today? Or are you going to make it through? Are you going to stick with God or are you going to turn your back on Him? Are you going to whine and whimper and run out and say, oh, God, God's forsaken America, He's forsaken. He might have forsaken a whole lot of them here, but He will not forsake you. Amen. And you'll make it through. Amen. And I've told you before, the last night we were at Paris Island, we were laying at attention. How many ever laid at attention? Laying at attention. Drill instructor called me everything but a human being. For 13 weeks. He invented cuss words I'd never heard in my life. <laughs> I'm serious, a heart attack. I thought, what in the world? But the last night we were laying there, the buses were sitting outside, lined up to take us to Camp Lejeune, Camp Geiger. They were lined up, and the last thing he said to us, he said, Good night, Marines. You earned it. You're no longer a blankety-blank, so this, that, this, that. <laughs> now you're a Marine. Well, now, can he walk by your bunk, find you laying in your bunk at home? Can he walk by and speak into your soul and say, 
I love you, Christian. I love you, believer. You are really a true believer in the Lord Jesus. We've got to find out, don't we? You're going through it right now. You're going to find out what you're made out of. You're going to find out. You, do, you might never have known before. Most of I've never been through anything like this before. But I'm finding out how I'm going to react to it. How many ever heard of Herman Cain? He's a black man, a good man, a good Christian man. Had great respect for Herman Cain. He just passed away the other day. That's my brother in the Lord. He got sick. He went to the hospital, I think, in March or April or somewhere in there, May, with this COVID-19. And he just passed away the other day, went on to be with the Lord. That was my brother, Herman Cain. He stuck until the end with his Lord Jesus Christ. Stayed it till the end. Stayed the course. He was there. Stayed it till he drew his last breath. Make your mind up in his house today. Choose the way you're going to go. Joshua said, choose you this day whom you'll serve. I might die with it. But if I do, it'll be up here in this pulpit. Of course, if I come down with the, the, you know, the symptoms, I won't come up here. And I won't try. I, won't, I, I, I would, I would uh, what do you call it? Uh, quarantine. I'd quarantine myself. I don't give any, anybody this stuff. But by the grace of God, I'm going to stick until I'm gone from this world. Amen. 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 Father, in Jesus' name, bless your word. There's some folks in here, the Lord, this morning who may be, as Elijah said, why halt you between two opinions? They're halting. They're fence straddling. They don't know which way to go. I pray, Lord, with all of my heart, as Joshua said to them, choose life. Choose you this day whom you'll choose life. Choose the Lord. I pray this in thy holy name. For Jesus' sake I ask it. Amen.